As you probably know, Trinidad and Tobago has always placed very great emphasis on its relationship with the Holy See. Cognizant of the fact that there is a significant Catholic presence that makes up this diverse society of ours, and where our constitution, of course, provides for the right to worship. In this way, Trinidad and Tobago is a model nation that believes in God as the Supreme. His Excellency, Archbishop Thomas Edward, Edward Gullickson, Apostolic Nuncio of the Holy See and Dean of the Diplomatic Corps, presented his letters of credence on December 10, 2004, which means that he has been with us for just over six and a half years. And let me say he has had a distinguished uh, career as uh, um, ambassador of uh, the Holy See here in Trinidad and Tobago, and for which I want to congratulate him and thank him for the many good things he has done to improve the relationship between Trinidad and Tobago and the Holy See, but at the same time also um, in terms of uh, managing the relationships within the diplomatic corps and between the diplomatic corps and the ministry. Archbishop Gullickson was previously stationed in Rwanda, Austria, Czechoslovakia, Jerusalem, Israel, and Germany. But his first, first posting as an apostolic nuncio was to Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean. Let me also wish him very well because his next appointment is as apostolic nuncio in the Ukraine. Archbishop Gullickson has made interventions in ensuring that a new archbishop is named to succeed the Archbishop of Port of Spain, His Grace Edward Gilbert. And as communicated by the uh, Nuncio on July 6, 2011, Father Joseph Harris, a Trinidad and Tobago national, has been appointed by His Holiness Pope Benedict XVI as the co adjutor Archbishop of Trinidad and Tobago and will take over in December 2011. Of course, you know Pope Benedict. 16th has also appointed another national of Trinidad and Tobago, Father Jason Gordon, as Bishop of Barbados and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And uh, perhaps this is a reflection of the confidence that Your Excellency has in, you know, the people of Trinidad and Tobago and those who have served so well, well and so faithfully. The, the Archbishop is also Dean of the Diplomatic Corps, as I told you. And upon his departure, His Excellency the Ambassador of Costa Rica, Ambassador Ricardo Thompson Thompson, will assume this position. And I thought it fitting that uh, we would invite him here today and, uh, so that there will be a somewhat of a handover um, from the, His Excellency Archbishop Tom, Thomas Gullickson to him. Of course, the outgoing dean may be requested to advise of any outstanding issues which are under the purview of the dean. Just to let you know, diplomatic relations between the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago and the Holy See were established on June 23, 1978. And the, the Apostolic Nunciature, or the Vatican Embassy in Port of Spain, is also accredited to 23 other Caribbean countries. Wow. Well, South sovereign nations. Okay. The Embassy of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago to the Kingdom of Belgium is accredited uh, to the Holy See. Now, the high point of relations between the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago and the Holy See was the visit of His Holiness Pope John Paul II on February 5, 1985. And in September 1997, our then President Arthur N. R. Robinson paid a courtesy call on the then Pontiff John Paul II. And during that visit, His Holiness recalled the 1985 visit and expressed satisfaction on Trinidad and Tobago's role in international affairs. The Republic of Trinidad and Tobago and the Holy See share similarities in their support for multilateralism and the United Nations as its premier forum. Both states respect and adhere to international law and are committed to the purposes and principles of the Charter to the U of the UN, namely respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms, the respect for sovereignty, sovereign equality, and territorial integrity of all states, as well as non-interference in the internal affairs of other states. All of this, of course, qualified by acceptance of the responsibility of the international community 
to take collective action in cases of gross domestic violations of human rights or genocide, the rejection of the threat or use of force in international relations, one example being the peaceful quest for a comprehensive, just and lasting peace in the Middle East and support for the right of peoples to equality and self-determination. And so let me say that His Excellency spent his six and a half years here and would testify that our plurality could be a lesson to the world. In fact, you know, I am discovering more and more that many countries now make it a point to study the sociology of Trinidad and Tobago and the harmony that exists amongst our people.